टूडेज क्लास इज फ्रंट हॉपर डायफ्रेक्शन एट सिंगल सीट द बेंडिंग ऑफ लाइट वेव्स व्हेन दे रीचेस एनी ऑब्स्टेकल ड्यू टू दैट रीजन वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग द शैडो रीजन दैट इज डायफ्रेक्शन फ्रंट हॉपर डायफ्रेक्शन सो फ्रंट इन दिस फ्रंट हॉपर डायफ्रेक्शन द सोर्स एंड द स्क्रीन आर इनफिनिट डिस्टेंस द वेव फ्रंट इज प्लेन वेव फ्रंट we have to use the lens converging lens to focus the beam at a particular instant that is about the fraunhofer diffraction now our concept is fraunhofer diffraction at single slit that means here we have to take one slit the width of the slit here i am saying small a the width of the slit i am saying here small a now let us consider a source of light this s is a source of light s is a source of light this source of light emits the light waves in all the directions to get the parallel beam of wave front plane wave front we have to use one lens this lens is convert that beam into parallel beam this parallel beam is traveling very long distances like this we want to focus that one on our screen the here m n is the screen m n is the screen in the length of focal length we have to take on more lens so this is another lens due to this use all the beams are focused at the position p not all the rays are reaches the p not now we have to take now we have to take a slit this is a slit this is a slit the width of this slit here i am saying the width of this slit here i am saying this is the total width here we are saying that one a okay this is we can call as a and this is b and this is c okay now this is a slit for our convenience if we take for initially like this so on untouched portion of the light is directly reaches our screen at the position p not there we can get the maximum intensity whenever these beams are these rays are uh, reaches it strikes any obstacle the light will bend the bended rays that means those are also called as diffracted rays reaches our screen at the position p1 at the position p1 now we want to know that whether the p1 is having the maximum intensity or minimum intensity okay so regarding that one we have to be take to calculate the maximum intensity and also the minimum intensity conditions here we have to be take the total the total uh, uh slit is divided into two equal parts for example if you see here ap not and equals to cp not ap not equals to cp not ap not equals to cp not that means both are travel equal distance reaches the screen at the position p not that's way we can get maximum intensity there but now the rays are diffracted the rays are diffracted with the angle that is theta that is called as angle of diffraction with the angle of diffraction our rays reaches the position p1 that means here these two are diffracted rays here ap1 and cp1 okay we may take this one is also one more ray diffracted ray why because so the slit the rectangular slit so at the edges also the light will bend that is we have taken here okay so a b c now calculate the conditions for the maximum intensity and also the minimum intensity we have to take we have to take path difference why because this is one ray reaches and this is another ray now what is the path difference between these two rays we have to calculate path difference means length difference simply length difference for example if we take this is 5 uh, this is 5 cm and it is 6 cm length so what is the length difference between these two 6 minus 5 this is the 
actual processor we are doing that means one meter but in our optics just we have to draw the normal if you draw the normal so whatever the extra length is there that is the path that means here to here 5 centimeters that means here 1 centimeter that means the path reference is 1 meter or 1 centimeter 1 meter or 1 centimeter simple thing we have to be remember is whenever we want to calculate the path difference between the rays what we have to do is we have to draw the normal now AP1 and BP1 are participating in the diffraction that's why to calculate the path difference we have to draw the normal this is the normal this is the angle of diffraction this one we can call as D if this position we can call as D now BD is the BD is the path reference BD is the path reference suppose if we take here if we take here from the both the rays BP1 is greater than AP1 BP1 is greater than AP1 that means the path difference is path difference is path difference equals to BP1 minus BP1 minus uh, AP1 BP1 minus AP1 that equals to that equals to BD that equals to BD this is the path difference we will calculate this path difference by using the triangle from this triangle okay we have to be divided this total in total width into two equal parts that is a by 2 and this is a by 2 a by 2 and a by 2 okay from this triangle triangle yeah, bad we have to take sin theta equals to sin theta equals to sin theta equals to opposite that means bd by hypotenuse hypotenuse which is equals to ab that implies what we want here bd why because that is the path reference that is bd equals to bd bd equals to ab sin theta bd equals to ab sin theta therefore path difference equals to path difference equals to ab which is equals to the half of the width of the slit half of the width of the slit total width is a half width means a by 2 a by 2 sin theta this is the path reference this is the path reference suppose at the p1 if you want to get the minimum intensity when the minimum intensity takes place when the path difference is equals to the lambda by 2 then we will get the minimum intensity according to our supervision and also the interference concept so that means the condition for the minima the condition for minima condition for minima condition for minima the path difference must be equals to the path difference must be path difference must be equals to the the path difference must be equals to the lambda by 2 lambda by 2 that equals to according to our theory what we got here a by 2 sin theta a by 2 sin theta 2 2 cancel therefore therefore the condition is therefore the condition is a sin theta equals to lambda we can get the we can get the minimum intensity we can get the minimum intensity for example for example if we divide if we divide if we divide slit into slit into four equal parts how many equal parts four equal parts four equal parts means the slit width becomes a by four automatically the path difference becomes a by 4 sin theta equals to a by 4 sin theta equals to lambda by 2 a by 4 sin theta equals to lambda by 2 2 times cancel that implies a sin theta equals to a sin theta equals to 2 lambda 
Suppose if we divided that one into two equal parts, we got a sin theta equals to lambda. If we divided that one into a four equal parts, four equal parts, a sin theta equals to two lambda. So on like that, if we divided that one into the n number of equal parts, then we can get n number of equal parts, n number of equal parts, we get, we get minimum intensity. Uh, that is also called as minima. That is also called as minima. Okay. Therefore, the condition is a sin theta equals to n lambda, a sin theta equals to n lambda, where, where n equals to here, here, n equals to 1, 2, 3, so on. This is the condition for the minima. Now, we have to calculate the condition for the maximum intensity also. To get the condition for the maximum intensity, here we have divided that one, the total split into two equal parts, four equal parts, six equal parts, like that. That's why we got the condition for minimum intensity. Why we got that one? So, the, uh, the first refractive ray is coming here and another ray is coming here. These two are participating in a diffraction. Okay, these two are participating in a diffraction. The path reference between the total lambda is divided into two equal parts. Lambda by two, lambda by two. So automatically, lambda by two, suppose if we take as a full wave, here it is a, z, it is a zero, it is a lambda by two. So automatically, it will becomes like a lambda by two. That's why we get the zero intensity. Once again, I am recalling you that, that is, this is the first wave and another wave is started at the lambda by 2 position. That means the path reference is lambda by 2. So, automatically we can get the minimum intensity. Okay, according to the principle of subdivision of waves. Now, our concept is condition for, condition for maximum intensity. Condition for maximum intensity. Condition for maximum intensity or maxima, secondary maxima. Okay, secondary maxima, that is, that is, uh, the path difference must be equals to the, lambda by 2, but here, but here, why the path difference is lambda by 2 is, now we are divided the total slit into, three equal parts okay one two three three equal parts the path reference between these two is lambda by two the path reference between these two is lambda that's way so whenever we are divided that one into the whenever that is divided into the no, three equal parts three equal parts therefore the path reference equals to the path reference equals to a by 3, a by 3, sin theta, that equals to lambda by 2, that implies, that implies, a sin theta equals to 3 lambda by 2. When it is divided into, slit divided into 3 equal parts, 3 equal parts, 3 equal parts. Suppose, if we divide, if we divide, Slit into five equal parts. How many equal parts? Five equal parts. Five equal parts means the total width of this slit is A. We are dividing that one into five equal parts. That's way that one is A by 5. A by 5 sin theta equals to A by 5 sin theta equals to according to the condition that is lambda by 2. That implies a sin theta equals to 5 lambda by 2. Like that, we can divide the slit into 7, 9, like this, odd multiples. So, the finally, the finally, the condition for the maxima is, the condition for the maxima is, a sin theta equals to, what we can write is, 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. This is, condition for maxima, this is the condition for maxima, where, where, 
n equals to 1, 2. Suppose if you substitute 1, 2 into 1, 2. 2 ones are 2. 2 plus 1, 3. 3 lambda by 2. Suppose if you substitute 2, 2 twos are 2 twos are 4. 4 plus 1, 5. 5 lambda by 2. 5 lambda by 2. We can get the maximum intensity. This is the uh, concept about the Fraunhofer diffraction at single slate.